In 2023, Victoria's Secret commissioned 20 artists from around the globe to reimagine its iconic runway show. This is one of their stories. I mean, I grew up obviously doing magic. Being in my garden, making mud pies, mud castles. I had one of those um, Fisher-Price ovens that I dragged out into the uh, garden and just would cook with outdoor things. Oh, really? The whole time. So baby kiln? Baby kiln, yeah. It was definitely my first studio, but I had like, I don't know. It was just a bit of feral. That's not the only way I can describe it. <laughs> just being outside all the time, all weathers. Play makes me feel like I can access understanding. It, it's a connection to the earth, a connection to how humans treat the earth and how we kind of extract from it and how we play with it, conduct rituals and divination, how we connect with each other through the earth. It's a very like powerful material and fabric of our lives and I think it also has a lot of connection with my body, with our bodies. I think growing up being kind of gendered as a girl and a woman, there are so many things that like don't fit in. It's a very, very slim image of what that's supposed to look like and sound like. I started modeling when I was 14 and I already had a Saturday job at that point, so I was already working anyway. I'd been uh, given flyers for model agencies since I was like 11, but my mum had always said no. I just had a really heightened sense of myself as a commodity, which is kind of sad and perverse to think about now, because I didn't necessarily have the confidence of thinking I was like beautiful or attractive to people at school. But I kind of already understood through, I think, things like Victoria's Secret and magazines that my body looked like one of the bodies in these magazines and that maybe I could make money from it. Working in fashion definitely messed up my sense of body image. It's primarily been about the surface, about how you look and about things that are mostly unchangeable that I don't see many people getting away with unscathed, no matter where you are in the operation. I'm not really doing it so much anymore, just that it really has shaped me. It's been a complicated shaping, and one that has happened very publicly. Except from like moments and glimmers of being an exhibitionist and a show off. Process. So for the Victoria's Secret project, I'm creating a performance that in its plainest is attempting to embody the process of clay within a kiln. I'm wondering like how did you yeah, how did you come up with the movements with Jamila and like what are the what's the significance of them? I guess in terms of the process we don't st start with the movement, yeah. we start with an idea mm -hmm. and a question. So I already had the idea of making these five objects that kind of had a lot of heavy symbolism for me. Yeah. And so it's like the spoon, the house, the flower, the eye, the rose. And so in terms of the, then the movements emerging, it would be kind of like by creating sort of exercises and mm. instructions about really sort of like embodying those objects. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. And there's a sense of it being um, improvisation, but it's it has a very definite score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As such. Well, you know where to hit, like what to be doing. Yeah, and like, you know, still newness happens, mm. but also I've, there, I've got memory now. Yeah, I think that's what is like really fun about performance and like movement in general. It's like there should be like an element of intuition in the body leading, you know? I'm driven by 
my intuition when working with clay and making performances. There's definitely an internal knowledge seeking 